What's going on, guys? This is Brian and Jack, and this is also the Bolo Show. That's right, the Bolo Show, which stands for Be On The Lookout, where we are covering new comic book day releases this week. We're talking about first appearances, we're talking about reader buzz books, talking about that shiny object with the variant buzz, but then we're also talking about Jack's long-term play. Jack, how's your week been so far? That's been good. Uh, definitely, it was a rough weekend. We talked about that last night, uh, three up, three down. So um, certainly can't complain going on this week. It's been, it feels like long already, and we're already halfway through. But you know what? A good release week for comics. So there's, you know, a lot of books, I think, today that people are going to be very interested in. And I'm always excited to talk about that. Yeah, I'm excited for a new week. Got me a haircut again, finally. So I'm rocking my, my fresh do. Like I said on Instagram, felt like I left an Ewok on the floor with the way it was shaved <laughs> off. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and get into the list this week. And we're going to start with those first appearances. And coming up for the first appearances, we've talked about this title for a couple videos now. But we got Captain Marvel number 20 that gives us that full accuser core, right? Yeah. Now, I know we got a lot of new people to the Simple Vince Comics family. Uh, we've had incredible growth over the summer throughout the pandemic so let me school you um you new bolo show viewers to something that uh has long been a feeling of mine i hate team first appearances there's a million teams uh there's very few iconic ones a team is like a wrestling faction it's like when you don't know what to do with like five characters you throw them in a team that's kind of the marvel and dc way um, I don't take much stock into these team first appearances. I take even less stock into a team first appearance. It has to be designated a full appearance because it means it kind of appeared already. Um, but either way, Captain Marvel has that reader buzz back. People are paying attention to the series, which is a good thing. And we talked about that in the previous weeks. Um, all it seems to take is a first appearance in that series to get people back on board. Right. And another book that has first appearance in it is that Boom Studios, if you're a Power Rangers fan, we get that Draken New Dawn number one that gives us the full range, first full Ranger Slayer is Draken, right? Right. It would be really hard for me to judge whether or not the Ranger Slayer one shot would be that first appearance of this. Now, certainly it happened in Ranger Slayer. It kind of went unsaid. Um, it was sort of a last scene similar to, you know, what you get in Star Wars where you're kind of at that award ceremony and, uh, you know, she's taking the throne. But uh, he dragged in, in the one in the uh, number one issue of the new mini series where everyone was anticipating a brand new Lord Draken series, but of course the series takes place in continuity. In continuity, Draken is really down on his luck, um, and now Kimberly Hart, aka the Ranger Slayer, has taken over the role in the mantle as Draken. So this mini series was expected to be one thing; it came out a whole different way. Um, Definitely some key on this one. Spoiler variant. A lot of people were paying attention to the incentives have done extremely well. And of course, hey, the Simpleman's comics, as well as the 616 comics, if you like this title, because we have a brand new exclusive uh, from Steve Moore's amazing 500 copy undressed virgin uh, variant, gorgeous cover art. Um, if you're not familiar with Steve Morris, he's an amazing painter. Uh, does a lot of great work with uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And uh, he did this incredible Lord Draken cover for us right here, um, kind of just picking the former Draken uh, up in the clouds. So all kinds of great symbolism there. And this cover is available right now on both Simple Ones Comics and the 616 Comics. And that's going to wrap up first appearances for this week. So we're going to move right over into that reader buzz. Now, during the first appearances, we talked about how Jack just does not like those team first appearances but a lot of people watch the bolo show also know that the reader buzz is my favorite section of the list i love the reader buzz books but i'm not too keen on the first one we're going to talk about we're talking about that maestro number one love peter david who's writing this but just don't i don't have that gravitas or that desire to read maestro number one but yeah i love i like maestro as a character this seemed out of left field to me. Like it, the Immortal Hulk story is doing so well. I feel like I'm getting my Hulk universe right there. It's not like this is like spinning out of that storyline. Um, so to me, this is more of a cash grab. This is another number one to get exclusive to. 
it's another number one uh, with a lot of open order variants. Some of them are very nice, uh, a lot of incentives. Um, it's another series where I think it falls into that like bottom 25% that we talked about that like DC Comics is cutting that probably Marvel needs to start doing the same thing to. I don't think this will be a series that'll get major reader buzz beyond issue number one. I think that the buzz for this exists because it's a brand new title for Marvel. Right. I think there's a lot of variants, especially store exclusive variants that have more buzz than the actual story. And I also want to congratulate our channel sponsor, Frankie's yes. Comics. They have a Clayton Crane variant for this that's got that Infinity Gauntlet. But not only is it a great variant, but the symbology there. So, what's the symbology there? Symbology? And I'm sure the word you were looking for was symbolism. What is the symbolism there? Boondock Saints fans, if you're, if you're with me. But this is going to be the variant that he's using. Frankie's Comics is holding a brick and mortar store, right? That's right. Launching his brand new brick and mortar store in Apex, North Carolina. Uh, the book actually has the, uh, the date and the uh, kind of grand opening celebration information on the back. So that's definitely going to be a monumental book in Frankie's Comics history. And Clayton Crane's going to be there at that opening so you can get it signed by him as well. And witnessed. But we're going to move right on to the next Reader Buzz book. And we're talking about that final Harley Quinn issue, right? Harley Quinn 75? Yeah, now, uh, I, this is in the Reader Buzz section because it's certainly one that people were talking about. They want to see where this is going, right? Why are we ending the Harley series? What's going to happen for the future of Harley? But at the same point, this is really more of a variant book because I think most of the talk about this book has been the exclusive variants. Every store jumped on board and seemed to do their own exclusive a lot featuring Punchline and certainly punchline has kind of come onto the scene and knocked out harley i do not believe harley is down for the count there's too much money involved in this character dc just needs to find a more uh marketable way to kind of uh push her to the masses i think the over sexualized and the over dumb bimbo thing doesn't really work um and they need to get back to the aesthetic that they began with that seems to have had so much success and, and try to bring in a little more harley quinzel into harley quinn Right, and sticking with DC, we got that ongoing great James Tynan run right now with Joker War. We got Batman number 97. Yeah, I mean, this is a plug-and-play pick, right? I think we're going to be talking about Batman, Detective Comics, Nightwing, um, everything related to Joker War. This, this series is red hot. It's got James Tynan red hot. He's cashing in. He's dropping Department of Truth over with Image. He's got Wind over with Boom. He's got Something's Killing the Children over with Boom. Um, he knows right now is his time. Um, he's on fire and everything he touched seems to turn to gold. And we've got more new characters coming up with issue 100 and beyond. So stay tuned for this. This is, this is nothing new. We're going to be talking about this. And I really believe that these Joker War back issues are going to be back issue gold. I think this is a, a definitely a premium uh, arc within the Batman franchise. Right, and if James Tynan's the writer's name for DC Comics right now, we all know the writer's name for Marvel is Donny Cates, and we get that Thor number six this week as well. That's right. It used to be a battle between Donny Cates and Scott Snyder. It definitely feels like it's James Tynan versus Donny Cates at this moment. Um, that seems to be like the heavyweight matchup of the moment, but definitely, definitely, definitely Thor six. To me, it's the book of the week. It's the book that most people would want me to plug into my long-term play. And the reason why it's not quite simply is just because um, I don't like to put books like this in the long-term play. It's an obvious pick, right? This is the one that I say, grab covers off the shelf. If you see them, stack them, stock them. You look at what the sales of like one through five are going for on eBay. You're hitting like 130 to 150 for the first five issues. Um, people are grabbing this. This is going to be back issue fodder for a long 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 time and whether or not an issue is key or not i don't think it matters because we're starting to see some of those other uh early donny cates runs where some of the connective issues within like the Thanos run and the venom run have started to really spike uh you know you wouldn't have thought that say like venom number four would suddenly become an expensive book and now it is um so i think we're going to see some of the same with with thor Donny Cates, you know, I know like you were a diehard Jason Aaron guy, and I get it because nobody wrote that aesthetic better than him. But Donny is bringing new fans to Thor in droves, and I think is really going to change the game for this title. We've we've had that discussion. It's well documented on this channel, even within the show, between my love for Jason Aaron and 
and my hesitancy is that the same as like symbology <laughs> for Donnie Cates coming over to Thor, but he's knocked it out of the park. And I like. Well, I'm more of a Thor fan than a Venom fan anyways. But me, I like Donny Cates' run on Thor more than I do on Venom. Venom's great, but Thor's my wheelhouse, and I've been loving that run. This is one that I not only will have the floppies for, but I'll probably pick up when he's done with it, at least the, you know his omnibus or collected hardcover editions because it's sure. just a great story to read, especially sequentially rather than issue by issue. But that's going to lead us to the last one in the reader buzz, going back over to DC. We're talking about Nightwing number 73. I said, again, Joker War, uh, you know, great Joker Nightwing cover. Um, and then uh, your cover B by Alan Qua, amazing cover art. Um, definitely something to pay attention to. These are going to be the lowest printed probably parts of the Joker War. So if you're looking for that complete story, this is going to be the ones that I think will be tough to get. Don't wait for the conclusion of Joker War. Try to go back and piece together this set. Um, this is something to be pay attention to now while it's easily accessible. And real quick, before we move on, what were some books that you guys read this week that you enjoyed? Absolutely. And I also want to know, did you pick up Maestro and what did you think about it? But with that, we're going to move right on now into the variant buzz. First book we're talking about the variant buzz section is that Voyage to the Stars number one had a one in 10 variant for it. That's right. Now, if you're not familiar with Voyage to the Stars, it is a popular podcast. That's right. Podcasts are now getting their own comic book. So, Brian, there's hope for us, man. You know, one day the Bolo Show book could be coming (laughs) to a publisher near you. But, yes, the... um, Certainly, this podcast... We might have to make it ourselves, but it could happen. Right, right, right. Don't worry. I already got variant ideas, Brian. But... um, yeah, this podcast is different. This features stars of several popular television shows kind of coming together. Um, it's more similar to kind of the age of like voice acting back on like the radio days where like you'd sit around and listen to the radio and they'd have a radio program. And um, so this is kind of unique. They get millions and millions of hits. Um, it's a successful podcast on like the next level. So not surprising that it got some attention. This one in 10 incentive has been sold out at most uh, retailers. Definitely under ordered. Uh, it's by Freddie Williams, who actually has two one in 10 incentives making noise today. This is a book that we haven't talked about in a little bit, but that Terminator vs. Transformers issue number three had that one in 10 Freddie Williams variant, right? That's right. And I blame Mel V from the Mighty V, Mel V uh, YouTube show, and the It's the Drunken Chat Son who uh, was talking about this book um, over the weekend. And suddenly now this book has been selling out at your uh, favorite online retailers and spiking on the secondary market. No major events going on in the book, just kind of a popular cover art pick. Um, He put a funny post on Instagram showing a picture of the book uh, when he woke up in the morning and said he did not remember ordering copies of the book. But nonetheless, the book has spiked and I honestly believe it's due to the increased attention that Mel gave it. But one that gets attention on its own anytime you see Jen Bartel, especially an incentive, a high incentive variant, it's definitely worth the buzz. And we're talking about Star that one in 50 variant, right? Yeah, especially on a series, again, that was canceled and went to digital. So they really messed this series up. I don't know who's uh, currently reading it. I don't know what stores would really feel comfortable investing in it. Um, so I think that this one in 50, which is also gorgeous cover art is going to be tough to get. This is one I think you could see if star is a character who like long-term has some value, this could be a, a variant down the road that becomes one of those high dollar ghosts, because I just don't see a ton of stores, uh, throwing down for 50 copies of this one. I know I surely wouldn't. Right. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The rest of this variant buzz list we've talked about on this channel before, how there's late or printings are gaining popularity. And it shows with the buzz that some of these books have gotten. And first up, we got that Venom number 25, third print, right? That's right. That's right. Now, we've got Venom 25, third print, and we've also got Venom 26, uh, the second print, um, both coming back to print, as well as a uh, Venom 25, one in 25 uh, incentive. Um, All of those are in demand. And all of those, we will go into more detail in the long-term play section. I'll do the introducing of the books, if you don't mind, please. <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll fall for no banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> but the next one we're going to talk about, 
not Venom, because he just talked about that, but we mentioned Ranger Slayer earlier in this show. Here we have that Ranger Slayer one-shot second print, right? Definitely, and be on the lookout for those second prints because uh, this was a series that had some major reader buzz. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers late printings have been kind of ghostly as far as what the, the print runs have been, and we've seen that that Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers second print number one, what that's done on the secondary market, certainly what other key issues in Power Ranger lore think Mighty Morphin Power Rangers nine or Gogo Power Rangers eight, what their late printings have done. So this is one to pay attention to. This is one I certainly was ordering. But the last one we're talking about on that variant buzz list is Something is Killing the Children, number seven, second print. That's right, more fire Erica Slaughter cover art. Um, this is another one. We know what these boom low printings have done. We've certainly seen what these uh, Something's Killing the Children low printings have done. We've seen what issue number seven of Something's Killing the Children has done. All of this has combined to equal this second print coming out of the gates pre-selling $15 to $20. No shocker here. I think anything with amazing Erica Slaughter cover art is going to sell. So no doubt Something's Killing the Children is continues to be hot switch to late printings and we just talked about the end of the arc issue just hit foc this past week and we know the new arc is going to have a bunch of retail exclusives jumping on for that but we'll get into that another time because right now it's time for jack's long-term play so we touched on this during the variant buzz but Jack's long-term play for this week is the are those Venom late printings, right? That's right. And I think a lot of people are going to be down on them because I think they'll be accessible. Um, it certainly wasn't something that dealers didn't see coming. Most dealers had sold out of their first prints on these issues, so ordering late prints was a no-brainer. But we've been talking about the success of late prints, but most of the books that we're seeing pop off, right, the ones like the early Venom issues, some of the early Immortal Hulk stuff, some of the Thanos stuff, some of the stuff from series like Champions or Ironheart. The key to all of that stuff, Brian, is it's like a year to two years old. So what people aren't really picking up on is that if you want to make money on this late printing game, it's a long-term hold. But see, that fits right into your boy Bolo's wheelhouse because I love these long-term plays. I love that everybody's buying and flipping Thor 6. It's a great book. It's, like I said, it's probably the best book of the week. But that's not the one that's going to get my attention long term because while everybody's flipping that one, myself included, um, then I can also grab up these cover price or cheaper copies uh, of these late printings, 25 and 26. I would also pay attention to 27 when they drop that. But for the purpose of this week, uh, 25 and 26 certainly look to be key issues, certainly look to have a lot of attention. The incentive is going to devalue the, the regular play printing of, um, of 25 that plays into your wheelhouse. I think you grab these covers, you stash them long-term, you bet on the success of this Venom series, you bet on the success of the characters related to it, you bet on the success of Donnie Cates, and you bet on the fact that this is a trend that's going to continue. And the best part about it is you're doing it all for cover price. And the beauty of the long-term play is we're looking at books that really are being overlooked. Uh, maybe people like them, but they're not being looked at as, say, the investment of the week. There's a billion places you guys can go and hear people tell you about the hot book of this week. There's certainly uh, always going to be that type of book. Um, there's a lot of places you can go that are going to tell you about, look at this high ratio variant. This is going to have the lowest print run, blah, 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 blah. Anyone can do that. Um, what we're trying to do is, is show you the books that are accessible, that are affordable, um, and that will be overlooked by many uh, and allow you to make those long-term plays. And the long-term money is where the money is at. If you were buying those late prints two years ago, um, you are coming into some money right now as a lot of books are popping off 30 40 and $50 on the secondary market. And there's no doubt that these books have that potential. Yeah, I like your late printing pick. Mine would differ from yours this week, and you kind of touched on it, but I actually do like that Ranger Slayer number one second print. So it's another late printing as well, and you everything you described on it. I'm a big fan of Ranger Slayer. I kind of like, people are going to hate me for this, but I actually like the Power Ranger comic book a little bit more than Venom, but that's just me. Um, but no doubt, Venom has the fan craze. It's just my personal opinion, my fandom, my money. So that's why I would pick up Ranger Slayer number one second print myself. Um, like we always say, buy what you like. We offer our opinions. That doesn't make it in stone. That's kind of what, when they say the word speculate, that's what speculate means. 
Either way, guys, that's the Bolo Show for tonight. But before you go, we want to remind you this Saturday at 2 p.m. What's going on at 2 p.m. Saturday, Jack? Well, we are releasing our next exclusive variant. And, you know, this one definitely comes with a heavy heart, as it was supposed to be announced, of course, by the comic jabroni himself on his YouTube channel. Unfortunately, with his untimely passing this weekend, we did not get the opportunity to begin that collaboration. But in his memory, we are soldiering forward. Uh, we are bringing some TMNT goodness to the comic community. Um, and we're doing it all in honor and in the name of Edwin the Comic Jabroni. So this Saturday, dropping TMNT 110, brand new exclusive from Simple Men's Comics and the 616 Comics, uh, featuring three covers. We've got a trade dress cover, a virgin color cover, and a virgin red scale cover honoring the original book that we're homaging, that Raphael number one from the micro series, which was the first appearance of Casey Jones. We've replaced Casey Jones on the cover with Alopex, uh, Raphael's kind of looks like love interest, and uh, the newest member of the Splinter Clan, the sixth member of the team with her awesome green bandana right there on the cover. Um, we're really excited about this release. Trade dress options will be available for just $9.99. We are trying to bring some affordable comics to the community. And uh, this is by Hal Laren, who's an amazing artist. You're going to see us do a lot of work with him. Um, and he brings an ultra-realistic style to TMNT. Edwin was really excited about this book. Um, it doesn't feel the same without him, but uh, we want to try to bring some of that good uh, Jabroni Nation uh, good vibes, energy, and charisma with us uh, on the release of this one. So check us out Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Times, uh, SimplementsComics.com, the 616Comics.com, uh, ExclusiveVariants.com. It'll all, they'll all have this book listed. So there it is, guys. That's the Bolo list and the Bolo show for this week. This is Brian Jack from Simplements Comics. See you guys in the next video. Thinking you got me right where you want me. I tell a ghost is dug up. Sending them shots. We send them back. Young ain't really about that. Run. It's always bounce back. Need more hands just to count that. Stay on my belly. I need me more breeze just so we can get the team right.